this is a just one of a trip and a lot of times the mamas just don't have enough milk for two and uh, much less three so I decided to, to take it from her and bottle feed it. Bottle fed lambs don't normally grow off as good as those that are on their mamas because see I'm I started out feeding them four times a day, now I'm down to three, and I'm going to try to wean them on the feed. They don't seem to be caring or having much interest in feed right now, but they are grazing a little bit. But what I mean by feed is, you know, some kind of uh, higher protein food that would uh, help them take the place of milk. And this is, this is one of the triplets, the other one is a triplet, and this is an orphan right here. His mama died after he was born. I don't know why, but she, you know, uh, there could have been a, a lamb that was hung up in her. You know, sometimes they come backwards, and, and sheep are so small you can't get your hand in there to turn much, and so uh, they just die. You just can't hit. This is a, a mixture of, of lamb saver milk, they call it, and. Uh, you just mix it with warm water, about, I don't know, maybe 80 or 90, about 90 degrees or something like that, and uh, they like it. They're very uh, competitive as far as when it comes to the bottle. They'll butt and knock each other out. That's why I try to feed them one at a time. So uh, it makes it easier on me. It helps know who the mama is, and uh, I've been keeping records like this ever since I started keeping them, so I can pretty much tell you who the grandmamas and great grandmamas are. Sometimes they lose an ear tag, and when they do that, it, it stops there. I can't can recreate who's who. There's a total of about 80 lambs. Uh, last year we had right at 100. This year we we're down because I sold our coal and sold uh, some older ewes that had, uh, diminished in, in production. And, uh, and then I brought on some, some ewes that, uh, that were raised here for production. And they don't always have a whole lot. They, they usually just have one, sometimes twins. And uh, so that's why the production is down. Plus, during the cold February weather, uh, I had a few that died during birth. This is a little ram lamb here. He's real aggressive. The other two are ewe lambs. And, and ewe, E-W-E -E is how you spell it. That's the uh, what you call the female sheep and the male sheep are called rams, R-A-M. Our goal is for pretty much for all of them to have twins. Occasionally they'll have a single and occasionally they'll have triplets. This year we had about five sets of triplets. And I left some of the triplets on for the mom. I think there's uh, three sets out there that are raising their, their own triplets. And I've, I've noticed that some of these lambs have different techniques for nursing the bottle. Like his technique is slower, and uh, this number 32 right here uh, is explain what you saw the older sheep eating. And, and that's a mixture of cotton seed and these, uh, what they call 50-50 pellets there at, uh, at Reader's, but it's a mixture, 50% 
uh, soybean hulls and 50% corn gluten, which is the byproduct from making ethanol gasoline. And it looks like this when, you, when I feed it to them. It's got, it's about 95% cottonseed, which is high protein, it's 20% protein. Uh, but the sheep don't really like it by itself, so I have to put some of that 50-50 mix in there, uh, which they really, really like, and then they're, they'll eat it. And I also put minerals in there daily. Uh, and when I first had the sheep, they'd go two or three weeks without hard eating bothering the, the minerals, and then they'd eat a lot at one time. So uh, my way of thinking is I'll just feed it to them in the feed, and I give them, you know, maybe not quite the daily amount that they need, but they over a period of time, it averages out, I think, and they, they wind up getting a pretty good ration, I think. I'm gonna say this is probably, uh, cotton seed by itself is 20% protein, so this is probably 18% protein, uh, because I don't put a whole lot of pellets in there, just enough so they would eat it. And that's the same thing I feed the cows, uh, except I put cow minerals in, in theirs, and then I put sheep minerals in the sheep feed. But, uh, I get the cotton seed locally down at the Janet Randolph. I know a lot of people that might see this uh, don't have access to cotton seed, so um, it's, it's really a good feed. It's almost the perfect feed because it's got oil and seed and that gives them a lot of energy. And it, it just really helps maintain their body conditioning really well. Uh, right now the ewes are, are putting out a lot of milk and really going to peak in another week or two. And so it's important that you feed them uh, a good ration while they're producing a lot of milk for their lambs. And uh, you know, if you don't, they're going to lose their weight because that, all that's going to pass on through them to their lambs. And uh, so you, you really need to feed them well. And uh, I like the lamb in February uh, this year. It was you know bad cold weather, and we lost some lambs. But uh, by the time May comes around, when I wean them, these lambs will be. 40 to 50 pounds, and uh, you know it won't be a big ch change from them not having their mamas to going out and earning their grazing on their own. You know, they're, they're already grazing, and they're, they have uh, they're ruminant animals. They have a split hoof, and they uh, they process food in those four stomachs. But when these lambs are born, those stomachs aren't quite developed yet, and so it takes them two or three weeks before they kind of start are able to graze and then they start chewing the could. And uh, that's part of what an adult uh, grown uh, sheep would do or a cow would do is chew their could at what they've been grazing. So uh, it's, you know, it's good to have good pastures, you know, take soil samples and get your pH and your phosphate and potash up right. And uh, if you do that, you're not gonna have a whole lot of trouble grazing uh, any kind of animal. Uh, they, the sheep and the cows work good together. Uh, we have, like say 60 roughly mama sheep are ewes, and then we've got 80 lambs, but we've also got about 18 or 20 uh, head of cattle. And uh, they, they work good together. The sheep will, will graze on browse more so than cows will. So I normally run the sheep ahead of them. And uh, uh, sheep have internal parasites and so do cattle. But the sheep get the freshest grass. The, the same parasites that affect sheep will not cattle and uh, so it, it doesn't hurt the cattle to come behind the sheep a day or two later uh, grazing there so uh, that's one way of trying to reduce the amount of medicine and different things that I, I have to feed you know when they do become wormy or have parasites in their stomachs and those parasites can really affect their growth with the sheep's growth and cows growth uh, if, if you don't control them. I don't, you can't ever get rid of them but if you control them uh, you know you can do pretty good you know, by just rotating your pastures. We've got 10 pastures here, which uh, means that, you know, out of 38 acres, we got a lot of small pastures, but that's ideal for sheep farming. You can move them from one pasture after a day or two to another one, and, and those uh, pastures officially will get a rest period, and that allows that grass to grow back. So uh, that's another way of trying to control your parasites in the, in the sheep's stomach. So, uh, <coughs> oh, oh, the hay in the background here, uh, sheep don't really like uh, the high protein uh, blue grass horse type hay. They like just good average, uh, maybe uh, 
uh, 8% protein hay. Uh, they seem to do real good on that in the winter time. And, uh, but once it, right now it started greening up pretty good here in mid-March or late March, and they just about quit eating hay because they like you know green grass. And it's kind of like ice cream to them. They, they don't want to eat the peas and cornbread out of the hay. They will when they need it, but uh, they're, they're eating a lot of uh, green stuff now. And uh, you can tell they're, uh, you know, they, they belch uh, whenever they chew their food and it smells. I mean, they, uh, if they eat wild onions, whew, you can really tell it. So you know what they're grazing by the smell of them. So uh, these, these sheep are called Katahdin sheep. They're a hair breed. They're not a pure breed. They are a, a, a composite breed of sheep from all around the world. And they, they shed their own wool. You know, I don't shear them. Uh, the, the wool is short haired and so it's not good for wool uh, making sweaters and that type of thing. So it's a meat sheep. They're bred to, for slaughter. And there's a lot of people in the United States, especially all around the world, that like to eat sheep. And that's, that's what these are bred for. Okay. What we'll, I'll show you their feet. And this is called a split hoof. And the uh, uh, that's like a deer and a cow and maybe some other wild animals but uh, goats have split hooves and they are animals uh, that uh, graze on grass and they eat the grass and it goes into their stomach well these animals when they're grown they have, are big they have four stomachs and I don't know exactly what all goes on in their stomachs but the first stomach is just kind of like a holding space for it and they'll regurgitate or kind of almost vomit some of that grass that they've been grazing on back up and put it in their mouth and chew it again and that's called chewing their cook and that's just a part a uh, way of digestion and uh, so you can see their teeth which uh, they they're pretty sharp they have teeth on the bottom so, and, and no teeth on the top. Their teeth on the, there's no ever, never any teeth on the top. They don't grow up there. And uh, the bottom teeth are sharp, so whenever they take grass in their mouth, they kind of tilt their head up a little bit and it cuts it off because they, they are mashing their teeth against the top part of their gums and it, it cuts it off. And that's the way cows do and, and the adult sheep. But, and the lambs are born with teeth in their mouth. And uh, so they, uh, they, they kind of come in the world ready to graze. After, they, after a couple of weeks of nursing their mamas, you know, they still will nurse for about three months. But uh, they, they start learning to graze and, and their mama actually teaches them what to graze because the lamb will be right alongside their mama. And uh, she's gonna, whatever she eats, they're gonna try it. And if, if the, there's a plant there that maybe has a different smell and the mama doesn't like it, well, the lamb learns not to, to graze on that too or, or eat it. So sheep are, are uh, really a, a fun animal to raise and, and watch them grow up. They, uh, they tend, you have to tend to them, you know. But it's, there, there's more work to it than cows but uh, cows are a little more dangerous than sheep. The sheep aren't gonna kick you or they're not gonna butt you. Uh, now like these, they're, they're, I fed them just a few minutes ago of milk in the bottle, but they think they need some more. They'll do this all day long. So, uh, and there's some sheep behind you, some lambs behind you that, that they're on their mamas, you know. And uh, so they're not gonna come up here to me. And they're a little bit bigger than these lambs because they're, they're with their mama all the time. They get milk whenever they want. These sheep depend on me to bring them milk. And I don't bring it every hour. I bring it about every four hours. The way I keep uh, identification of these lambs is through these ear tags. And these ear tags have a number on them and I, I can also write on here with a permanent ink maybe who their uh, their daddy is you know the ram lamb 
and I've got a system where, you know, if, if it's, uh, I've got one amp round, and I, I use number A, or letter A, and then I've got another one that's O, and that stands for various things, but anyway, it helps me keep up a little bit better of identifying them, and uh, if, if this lamb gets separated from its mama uh, or something, I can look at, I got a little booklet that I keep, and I know number 48 is belongs to a certain you, and I can uh, you know, get them together. Sometimes the mama will go off and graze out of another pasture, and that lamb is left by itself. And, and so it kept me later on to, to identify them. And you can see the, uh, the blue tags is what I used this year, and the red, these were left over from last year. All right, to have small ruminant goats or sheep animals, you really need a, uh, a net wire or a hog wire fence and that's the wire that's got these little squares in here and uh, some of them are smaller squares especially for what they call goat wire it's because the goats won't be able to get their head most goats have horns where the sheep that I have the Titans they don't have horns so if they stick their head through here the horns won't get hung on the wire and they can pull their head back through but uh, you need a you don't have to have one this tall. They make a wire that's like 32 inches. That's plenty high. And I put a strand of bob wire on top of the, the, the top wire of the net wire to keep cows or horses or whatever you may have from leaning over and, and grazing on the other side of the fence. Uh, it's not for the sheep, it's for the other livestock that you may have. But this works really good. I use a treated uh, post. These are uh, six inch. Uh, post uh, eight foot long so I got uh, about almost about three feet of it in the ground and then uh, this is a uh, five inch uh, brace post and then I've got the uh, this is high tensile uh, galvanized wire with a ratchet stretcher on here and uh, that helps build your brace and makes it good and tight and so it makes a good tight fence and uh, uh, my son and I built these ourselves. We're, we're kind of proud of them. It's just a little bit of work, but uh, it's worth it, you know. I don't plan to ever have to, in my lifetime, to have to replace this fence. I hope not anyway.